Hello and welcome. Have you ever struggled with managing Kubernetes configurations across multiple clusters? Are you tired of copying and pasting YAML files from one environment to another, like it's well 1999? Well, I may have a solution for you and that solution is what we're going to be exploring in this video. So let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to be talking about config sync. So let's get to it. So I'm just going to start up my slides here and we can get it moving. Today, we're going to cover what config sync is and why we need it, how config sync works, how to set up config sync on a GKE. And by GKE, I mean Google Kubernetes engine and, and non GKE clusters as well. So the image on the right just shows you an overview of what you can achieve using config sync across multiple clusters. But we'll understand this better as we go ahead. So the problem. What is config sync or why do we need config sync while we have in this video in the first place? The problem is that maintaining a consistent set of configurations across multiple clusters is a big challenge, especially as your organization grows or as your team grows and you need to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters, either for dev, for stage, for all the different environments and different teams you may have. And you want to maintain a consistent set of policies or configurations across these clusters, either security policies or tools that you want to install across all of your clusters. You don't want to manage each of these separately. It becomes super difficult to manage across multiple clusters and namespaces. And if you're in this problem, the need for a way to synchronize all of this together becomes very, very apparent. You know, it's very obvious that you need a better way to manage this. And how most people do this is either jump to their CI CD pipelines and set up tools to manually configure their clusters when their CI CD pipeline runs. But then that's a problem because then you need to manage different sets of configurations for a different pipeline. But there's a better way, and that's config sync. So, what is config sync? Config sync is an open source tool by Google, okay? Open source in quotes because it is open source in the sense that you have it available and you can use it in non GKE clusters as well. But Google hasn't like officially said that this tool is open source, right? Uh, in all Google references to the tool, they still refer to it as something you use as part of Anthos and Google Cloud. So this tool helps you manage and synchronize configurations or policies across multiple Kubernetes clusters. And you can use your source as any Git repository. So what does this mean? This means you can store your Kubernetes configurations or security policies in GitHub, Bitbucket, source repos if you're using Google Cloud source repos. And very recently, you can use OCI images and Helm chats. So OCI is Open Container Initiative. So you can store this specific set of configurations in an OCI image or a Helm chat, and you can synchronize all of this to your clusters using config sync. And this is adaptable to not just one single cluster, but like we said, multiple clusters, because which is the main point of config sync is the fact that you can apply a consistent set of configuration across multiple clusters without the pain of managing them. And then it's based on GitOps principles. If you don't know what GitOps means, GitOps is a way for you to manage uh, your, your configurations or your deployments to your production, dev, or whatever environment by using Git as the main source of truth. Okay, so you have a single source of truth for what's available in your environment as a Git repository, and then you have something, some sort of agent that continually pulls your Git repository and pulls the latest changes and synchronizes those changes to your live environment without you having to do anything. And this is an automated process. Okay, and finally, you can store and manage these configurations using YAML or JSON config. So YAML is very popular. Everyone who uses Kubernetes is familiar with YAML. So this way you can use this basic set of knowledge that you already have to manage these configurations as well. So in general, the architecture of config sync, like we've seen in the previous images is as follows. You have a platform administrator or a developer. If you're a single man team, you know, that needs to manage multiple clusters or environments, you just write your configurations, store them in a Git repository. And when you push them to a Git repository, you set up config sync. Here I'm using an image from GCP. That's why you see the Anthos config management, but it's the same tool. 
So config sync is a part of Anthos config management, uh, but you don't need Anthos. So don't let this confuse you. You don't need Anthos to use config sync. Okay. So you set up config sync and synchronizes with your Git repository and pulls those configurations and synchronizes them to your clusters. But we're going to take a look at this in a second. So what are the different ways we can use config sync? Like I said, there's the open source config sync, which you can install on non GKE clusters or even on GKE clusters and manage yourself yourself. You can install the operator and manage it yourself, or you can use the Google provided GKE or Anthos config sync. That's the managed version where Google kind of manages the operator for you and all the resources that's needed. And you just need to set up the configuration by either clicking a button as we'll see in the next uh, in the next demo that comes after this. So some of the main components of config sync is first of all the root sync. So the root sync is a custom resource object that manages cluster resources that is cluster wide. And then you have something called the repo sync as well, which manages objects specific to namespaces. So all these are custom resource objects that you can create to point or sync uh, configurations from different repositories. You have something called the resource groups, which is how config sync validates config and tracks resources that it's managed by config sync. And we'll see in a bit that some resources, when config sync is managing some resources automatically, it doesn't delete other resources that you may have on your cluster that are not created using config sync. So config sync is able to identify the resources that it created and manages on its own. And then you have something called a reconciler, or you can call this the root reconciler. And we'll be taking a look at this. And this is the tool that continually synchronizes or watches your Git repository for any change and synchronizes those changes to your cluster. So the root reconciler is responsible for synchronizing either root sync objects or repo sync objects to your clusters. Okay, so how do we set up config sync? Like I said, we can enable it directly on the UI and I'm going to be showing you that in a few minutes, in a few seconds, not minutes, we're already there. And then you can enable it using Terraform, which I'll be showing you as well, how you can set it up in Terraform. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how you can install on non-GKE clusters. So using the OIS config sync. Okay, so let's get into it. So we're going to start first of all, by taking a look at the UI. Okay, so here on Google Cloud, I have on my Google Cloud project right now, I have two clusters that I've created. All these clusters are created using code I have in my Terraform, and I'll show you that in a bit. So these two clusters, I have one running in the US East 1 region, and another one running in the US Central 1 region. Now I want to enable config sync on these clusters, and it's very easy to do from the UI. If you come down here by your right, you can see we have the config and the policy uh, options here. Yeah, I'm just going to click on config. So when this opens, we can see we have a nice observability dashboard here that tells us reconciliation status, synchronization status, and we can see all these metrics are empty because we don't really have config sync uh, enabled yet, right? And they have this nice packages tab as well that shows you the packages that are synchronized by config sync. And you have the settings here that shows you which of your clusters have been synchronized or not you can see we don't have any of those yet so we're just going to go ahead and click on this nice blue button here to install config sync and you can see it tells you to select the clusters that you want to install config sync on and easily i can do that by just selecting the clusters my clusters in us is one and central one and click on next and go ahead and proceed and set up the synchronization right now you can go ahead and click 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 next and that will install config sync on your clusters for you automatically and that will be managed by google and based on the configurations that you set here so here is where you're going to set your repository and all of that information but i'm not going to be doing this manually because i like to do hard things to scale so instead of going ahead and clicking all these buttons and setting up config sync manually what I'm going to do instead is cancel this and go set this up using Terraform. So I'm going to head back into my code here. Now in here in this repository, I have a, a, a folder here called Terraform, which I use to create those clusters that you see, like I mentioned earlier. And in here we have the code to create a cluster like we've seen. And I have this file here, which I call config management. Okay. 
Now in here we have resources that are used to enable config sync on our clusters. And the first thing we're doing here is we're creating a fleet, right? We're creating a fleet or a membership or hub membership for our clusters. Now, in this case, I have two clusters which I've configured using the configurations that you see here. I have a cluster in each region, okay? So I'm just looping through my region configurations here. And for each of those clusters, I'm creating a hub membership, which is how you create a fleet membership in Google because Remember, we we're managing multiple clusters and how you manage multiple clusters is by registering those clusters as part of a fleet. So registering those clusters here as part of a fleet, setting the project and all of that here. Okay, the next step after we create that hub membership, the next step we're going to do is to create a hub feature for config management. So first of all, remember, we register those clusters to a fleet. Okay. The next step is we're enabling the GKE hub feature. So the G GKE hub is how you manage your fleets on Google Cloud. So next is we're enabling the config management hub feature because we want to use the manage config sync installation by Google. Okay, so I'm creating that hub feature here called config and I'm, I'm saying I want to enable this config management feature. And then next, I am creating a feature membership for each of my clusters. So now I'm saying for each of those two clusters that I've created, I want you to register them as part of this hub feature of the config management feature. Okay. So you can see here, I have a loop again and I'm registering them to that membership, right? That I just created, which is the config management feature membership here. And here I'm defining the policy controller, which I want enabled. So the policy controller, we're going to see that later on is a way for you to manage your security policies on namespaces, network policies, and all of that in your cluster. And then we have the actual config sync, which we're taking a look at in this video. Here I'm setting a source format of unstructured, which is the recommended way to set up config sync. Now there are different ways you can do this. Your source format can either be unstructured or can be hierarchical. And the difference here is that when you use the hierarchical, then there's a particular format that you have to set up your Git repository as, okay? You can't just set it up anyhow. But when you use the unstructured, you have more flexibility as to how or what folders you want to place where, and you can properly structure it the way it suits your need. And then here I'm configuring my Git source, okay? And I'm saying I want to use a secret type of JCP service account. So this is for the reconciler basically, okay? I want to use a GCP service account, so I need to give that service account access to be able to access my repository, right? And in this case, I'm defining the service account as the service account I created here earlier. And all of that is in here in the code. When I created my cluster, I did specify a service account and that service account is read from my IAMs here. So I have IAM here where I'm creating a GKE service account, as you can see. And I'm given that service account, just basic access, you know, cluster viewer and ability to write logs. And then I'm outputting that service account here. And then I'm using that service account in here where I'm creating my cluster. Now, if you're wondering how all of this works, inputs and outputs, it's using Teragram. I'm going to create a different video and show you how all of this is set up. If you need this information, just let me know. And, and I'm going to give you access to the repo as well and make a video how you can set all of this up. Okay, so I'm using that service account here when I created my cluster and then in my config management configuration here, I'm also setting that service account. Then I'm also setting the sync repo. This is the repository that I want to synchronize my clusters to. So this is where my configurations and security policies are stored. Okay. And you can see here, I'm using the cloud source repository, which we're going to set up in a bit. I'm going to show you how to set this up. I'm pointing that to a config sync repository. Okay. And I'm setting the branch that I want to synchronize as the main branch that had sync wait seconds. This defines how long I want to continually watch that Git repository, right? So I'm saying every 15 seconds, I want this to synchronize with my repository. And then I'm setting a policy directory, which is the path in that repository where my configurations are stored. And I'm going to show you this in a second. Now, if I go back out into my repository here, as we've seen, this is the repository I'm going to be synchronizing. You see, I have a policies directory in here and in that policies directory, I have a base and this base has a customization file here where I have network and I have external secrets. 
now if you don't know what external secrets are external secrets is a kubernetes operator that enables you synchronize google secret manager secrets to your kubernetes clusters kubernetes secrets so i'm setting that up in here this is something i want across all of my clusters right you know, you can imagine if i have hundreds or you know or tens of clusters for example i want each of these clusters to have external secrets configured so they can synchronize to secret manager and i don't want to have to set this up for every single cluster i can just set this up here by using the helm chat and saying i want to install external secrets on my clusters and then here i'm setting some network policies in here and it's just a basic network policy for the default namespace that allows ingress and egress but this is the basic setup let's just say these are the basic things i want to have set up in my cluster so i'm pointing my configuration to this base directory that's why i had to show you this that's all we're doing here so pointing that to this base directory and that's all with that i think we're ready to apply config sync to our cluster so let's go ahead and do that so now in my gke directory here i'm just going to run terra grant plan just to see what changes are going to be applied to my cluster and that's running okay so i see some resources here are going to be added taking a look you can see my hub feature membership you can see for the central one cluster the us east one cluster as well and yeah all these resources are going to be created for me just like i expected so i'm going to go ahead and oh, something else i haven't shown you is that i'm creating some iam permissions as well as you can see here i'm creating a workload identity permission that allows the root reconciler to be able to access the GKE service account that I created, which is what we have here. You can see the service account ID, which is the GKE service account that we created. We're granting access to the root reconciler for config management to be able to use that service account. And then we are also granting the source repo reader access to that GKE service account. And how do we do this? If I go back in here to my GKE IAM, you can see after creating my cluster, I'm granting the workload identity user permission to the root reconciler in the config management system namespace. And I'm also granting the source repo reader, as you can see here. And I'm also granting the artifact registry reader permission as well to my GK service account. With that, I think we're ready to do a Terra grant apply to apply those changes to our GCP resources. Okay, so that's running. We're going to say yes, go ahead and create all of that. So while all of that is running, we're going to go ahead and connect our repository to Google Cloud. Now I want to use Google Cloud source repositories because I don't want the pain of managing GitHub access tokens myself. Now you can decide to connect config sync on GKE directly to your GitHub repository or Bitbucket, but then that means you have to create GitHub tokens and you have to manage um, those tokens yourself and the configuration for those tokens and add those to config sync. I don't want to do that. I want to take the easy way out. Okay. And the more secure way, if you ask me, is I'm going to set up a shallow clone to source repository from my Git repository. And so that gives Google access to be able to read from my repository. And I don't have to set that up myself. Okay. So how do we do that? I'm just going to go to a project here which I call the artifact project. Now this is a project I've set up to manage artifacts on this, on this project. So I'm just going to go to source repos. So source repositories. Okay, so cloud source repositories, we're there. We're going to click on get started and we're going to connect our repository. So connect external repository, continue. Select the project. Like I told you, we're going to be setting that up in an artifacts project and Git provider, GitHub. Now I already, I've already logged into my GitHub account, as you can see here. So I have this connected, but if you don't have, don't have it connected, you can easily keep, click on this, connect a different account, and it's going to ask you to authenticate against your Git repository and set that connection. And once that's set up, you're going to have a list of your repositories show up here as well. Now I want to set this up with this repository, right? A longer dev config sync, which is why I just showed you here. This is the same repository that I want to connect. So I'll select that repository 
and click on connect selected repository. And that's working. That should go ahead and set up a connection. Okay, perfect. Connected. Now we have our Git repository connected to Cloud Source repository. Now take note of the name of the Cloud Source repository that we just synchronized. Our code isn't showing up here yet, but it should show up in a minute. Now we can go ahead and set up with that repository name. So here we have our resources created. We're just going to head back to GCP and confirm that we now have our config sync enabled. So I'm going to go back to my cluster. Just going to switch back here to the main project, which we have our clusters running on Kubernetes clusters. And we have our clusters. Now, if we go to our config sync, okay, let's see what's happening in there. Oh, we're beginning to see something, right? You can see we have config sync status. Now we have one healthy, one not installed. We're going to take a look at that in a moment and see why that's not installed. And one unknown here, reconciliation status. So let's click on settings and see what's happening. Hello again, this is me interrupting you from the future. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss future contents like this. Thank you. Okay, here we can see our cluster in US East 1 says it's configured. So it says it has config sync running. And if we go to packages as well, we can see we have our US East 1 cluster in here. And we can see external secret resource, okay? All our external secret resources are getting created. So it looks like that synchronization is working, but it is not yet completed. That's why it's still in an unknown state. But why is our US Central One cluster not synchronizing? So let's take a look at that. Okay, so now back in Google Cloud, you can see we have both clusters showing and we have them showing us synchronized and configured. If I go to the dashboard as well, we can see we have both clusters, both healthy, all synchronized. Now, when I first set this up, only one cluster was showing. And that was because there was an issue with installing config sync on the second cluster because I had created that cluster earlier. So all I had to do was just disable config sync and go install it back again. Same way I just did using Terraform and everything is showing back here. And if we go to packages now, you can see we have something here called a root sync. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have a root reconciler. And when you click on that, it, you can see we have two clusters showing here and we can actually view all the, these manifests or resources that have been installed or synchronized from our repository, which is perfect, okay? And this synchronizes every 15 seconds, like we have said. So if we make a change in our repository, config sync should automatically pick that up and also update that. And we can test that. We're just going to go back here to a code and I'm going to make a minor change here. And what I'm going to do is just create a new namespace policies. We have policies, JKE based here and this is where we're synchronizing this is where we're pointing our config sync configuration to so here i'm just going to create a new namespace here just for a test right ideally you may not even want to create a namespace but i'm just going to come here and duplicate one of these resources i have in here and create an additional namespace just to test that our configuration somewhere is working okay so we're going to create a new namespace and we're just going to call this namespace test namespace ideally what you want to use this for is to synchronize like your security policies or like external secrets that we've just set up and that's ideally what you want to use this for well we can use it to synchronize manifest as well kubernetes resources but it's which is perfect okay so i just added a new namespace here called test namespace back here in my external secrets resource and i'm gonna push this code so git that is and we have something changed in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that because that's the only thing we wanna update. So git add that file, okay. Now we're gonna commit that file. Add new demo namespace is what I'm gonna call that. Okay, I'm gonna push that now. 
Now what I expect is config sync should pick up that change and should synchronize our cluster with that recent change. Okay, if I refresh this file now, I should see our code is in here. Let's see, we put it in external DNS in here. Okay, so we have our namespace here. So now let's go back to GKE and confirm what's happening. So refresh. Okay, this synchronizes every 15 seconds, but we can check the packages. Sometimes it synchronizes much faster. So you can see something is happening. This is back to an unknown state. So EDI synchronization has just started. Yes, and we are right. You can see there's a synchronization going on right now. And once that synchronization is done, we should have our new namespace synchronized. And so let's take a look at that. So in progress, synchronizing synced. Okay. One cluster synced. So let's take a look at that. US central one has been synchronized and both have been synchronized now. So let's take a look at the resources. We should see a new namespace called test namespace. So let's look for namespace resources that have been created namespace. And here we go. We have our new namespace just created and synchronized for us. And this should be the same across both clusters. So easy as that. You can see we have our namespace here as well and everything is working as expected. So that's how you set up config sync on GKE. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to install config sync on a non GKE cluster. But, but just to take a bit more look at the resources created, if I come to workloads here, I'm browsing the config management system and config management monitoring namespaces. You can see it installed the root uh, reconciler. Like I mentioned, we have it installed the reconciler manager as well and the config management operator, which is responsible for managing the config management resources. So you can see we have that in here. And if we go, we should see our external DNS resource as well. And we have it in here, external secrets, sorry, external secrets, not, not external DNS, so external secret. And our external secrets operator is installed as well. You can see the controller, webhooks, and all of that installed. Perfect. And that's all we want. And that's it for this video. In the next one, like I said, I'm going to show you how to set up config sync on a non GKE cluster. And that's a much more manual process. So I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button on the video, subscribe so you can get notified when I create more amazing content and click on the description as well and subscribe to my mailing list. So you get notified when I drop new content about DevOps and SRE. So make sure you stay in the loop and until then I'll see you next time. Cheers. So in this video, we talked about config sync and should you use it? Should you not use it? That's a question ultimately you can answer for yourself, but from the benefits of seen of this tool so far, it's obviously something that's very much needed and something you should be using if you're managing Kubernetes configurations across multiple clusters today. The ease at which it brings and introduces to your workflow so you can maintain consistency across your environment security policies, configurations, and tools that are needed across your different environments and teams is something that's critical. And if you need this to be consistent across environments, then config sync is perfect for you. And it's a no brainer. That's where I leave it for this video. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.